Hey guys, TC Mabe here with TC Gaming. Wanted to give you a quick video for incorporating metahumans into the new third person Unreal Engine 5 project. So, um, what I did here is I just launched the uh, Unreal Engine 5, went to games, third person, create a new project. I'm going to call my new E5 metahuman. So, you just hit the create button there and let that build. Once you're inside of your project, you can go up to the window or tools here, actually window, and you want to come down to Quixel Bridge. Once you open Quixel Bridge, you can go into MetaHumans. You'll have to sign in, make sure you're ready for your project and all that. I have a uh, character that I've already downloaded. If you haven't downloaded one yet, you can click on it, say download, and then once it's downloaded, you can then hit add to add it into your project. So I'm going to let that happen real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, once you get done uh, loading the character into your project, you'll see a thing that pops up for missing plugins. You can just say enable missing for each of these. And real quick, you can see on the one that I have here, you're going to have to restart this project, but the one that I have here, just this little warning about um, it uses grooms only available at LOD 0 and 1 requiring a higher spec machine. Remind, uh, we'll, we'll come back to this in a second, but just remember that that warning's on there. I'll show you what we do with that. So we're going to go ahead and restart the project as requested. Do a save selected and just let it uh, reboot real quick. And once we come back into the project, we should see that we've added a couple of folders in here. And we want to talk real quick about just a conceptual um, what we're doing here. We already have a character. If we go to the world settings, if this window is not available, you can go up to window and flip on world settings. But in the world settings, you can pull down your game mode and you can also look at selected game mode and then you can see your default pawn class. So we have a BP in here for a third person character, which already has all of our controls and our inputs and our camera and everything else um, to run in here for our control rig. So if we run in here real quick you know we can go up this character has all of our IK already built in and you know everything looks good there what we want to do is we want to leverage the character from this and there's a couple different ways to do this I'm going to show you what I think is the quickest way but one of the things you could do just conceptually is if you go to metahumans and you go down here to the tray character the one that I just brought in when you open this up this character what you'll see in here is it actually has a parent class of actor so this character doesn't have any of the control logic on here for running around in the level doesn't have anything in here as far as um, you know being able to have cameras or anything like that and what we could do is we could turn this into if we went to class settings we could say the, the parent class of this instead of being actor would actually be character and if we turn this into a character blueprint then we could go and do other things to it to give it cameras and things like that and use it in the level with our controls we could copy those controls from the existing BP what I think is simpler is that if you go in again you have this third person character that's already in here what I'm gonna do is go into the mesh for this I'm gonna switch this skeletal mesh in mine over to be Manny and I'm also going to switch the Anim class over to be ABP Manny. If we look at the viewport, you should see that we now have the male mannequin for this because we're using a male character. Um, and what we want to do is actually go to this tray blueprint and open it up. And what we want to do here is we want to reparent this to be a child of our third person blueprint. So if we go in here to class defaults and we look for actually in the class settings parent class we want to go in here and type in third and our third person character if we make that the new parent class what we should see is that it brings our trade character in here now what I want to do to line all this up is I'm going to take this root where everything is underneath the root and I'm going to drag that up underneath of the mesh for the character and that should synchronize that those two characters are now on top of each other. If we go back out to our third person default pawn class out here in the map settings, we can now have a thing that shows up that we can see BP tray. If we hit play, what you're going to see is you have your mannequin that runs around and you have tray basically just on top of that. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to go into that BP tray mannequin and we're going to take the mesh character we want to go in here to visibility and we're going to say that that character is not visible 
And we also, under the visibility based anim tick option, we want to say always tick pose and refresh bones. And what that's going to do is it's going to pass animation data onto the, um, it's going to allow this to still animate even though it's not visible. And the last thing we do is we go to the body, well maybe not the last thing, but when you hit the body here and you're under the um, skeletal mesh, if you browse to that skeletal mesh, you'll find it out here in the um, content browser, right click on here and say create anim blueprint. I'm going to call mine ABP underscore tray and under the animation blueprint for tray all we need to do is tell it that we want to retarget our pose from another mesh and we'll just plug this in here and the once you click on the IK the uh, retarget pose for mesh it's going to ask for an IK retargeter asset you can just go and use the RTG mannequin and hit compile and save and now when you go back out here and hit play there's your character. In order to get this to work, you go out and go to the body, and now you're going to tell that that tell that that you want to use an animation blueprint, and you want to use ABP tray, and then compile that and go out here and hit play, and now you should see that tray has picked up and adopted all of the. Um, behaviors and the benefits of the character that's underneath of him. So he's got all of his stuff on and everything's good. He's got his IK. He can run around and play all the different animations. Now what I had said earlier is we wanted to remember about that LOD setting. If we go into Trey's character, and I don't know why these uh, <laughs> these strings on his jacket keep flopping around, but anyway if you go in here as you zoom in and zoom out you'll see that he, he has a beard and then he doesn't have a beard and he has a beard and he doesn't have a beard. That's because of these LOD settings that they had talked about earlier. So what we want to do is go down to this little thing called LOD Sync. And under Forced LOD, down here under the LOD settings, instead of negative 1, we want to hit 0. And if we hit 0 and compile and save, that will force it so that no matter what distance we are from Trey, he now has his beard. Okay. So again, there's your character. And he's got all of the behaviors that he should have as far as the uh, animations go. Okay, so again, that's a real quick way to work with a metahuman in Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully this is helpful for you and you find benefit in watching the video. You guys take care and have a great night, and I'll see you in the next one.